This is Tech Booth episode 2. Today, an introduction to audio mixing using Adobe Audition CS6. When you're mixing music, you are looking at doing base, four basic things. Four basic things. The first one is you want to look at the levels of each instrument so that um, nothing is too loud, nothing is too soft, you can hear everything clearly, so that's the first one. The second thing you want to do is equalization or EQing your different inputs, so your vocals, your instruments, and basically what you're doing in EQing is looking at the frequency of each of your inputs and enhancing or cutting back frequencies so that whatever you are listening to sounds the best it can be. So um, it shines out in the mix and you can hear it clearly and it reflects well what you recorded. So that's EQing. The third part of the chain will be compression. And what compression is, as the name sounds, is you're compressing the audio so that you don't have parts that are too loud and you're also in a way reducing the dynamic range of your audio a little bit so that it's not doesn't get wildly uh, loud in some parts and then it's very quiet in other parts and the last part of the chain will be putting in effects when you open your audition session i'm assuming here you already have a multi-track session that you are about to mix you are presented with an interface like this and you are in multi-track mode. In the multi-track mode you have the editor. In the editor that's where you see all your waveforms, a graphical representation of your audio. It is in this view that you can rearrange your tracks you can edit them, like cut them up, you can delete them and all sorts of things. So that is the editor mode. The mode that you're going to be in most of the time as you're mixing is called the mixer mode. And it is in this mixer that you're going to be able to adjust the levels using the faders. And it is also where you're going to be able to apply all your effects in this section of the mixer. There are a lot of other functions on the mixer, but we're just going to introduce just a few to show you how that mixer works and how you can get started with your mix. This first section you can see is where all your tracks are. All the faders are defaulted to zero. And right at the end on the right hand side is your master mix bus. Before you even start doing anything, I'd encourage you to organize your tracks. You can do this in the order that you're going to mix them in. So for example, in my case, I am going to start with the drums and then move on to the bass and then the rest of the other instruments and finally the vocals. It's good to stay organized as you mix and you know where everything is, especially if you have a large number of tracks that you're working with. Next, I would say just play through your tracks, just listen to what has been recorded. Listening to your tracks before you start mixing will help you to plan your mix. It will help you to familiarize yourself with the mix, especially if you didn't record it. It will also help you identify any problems that the instruments might have. For example, in this particular mix, the bass was recorded very low and there was some bleed from the electric guitar into the bass track. So that would need to be fixed before mixing begins. And you also have an idea of the structure of your track, where the chorus is, where there are any solos that are played, where the lead vocals need to be emphasized, and things like that. That way you are able to plan your mix well and know what you want to do and where. The next thing you want to do is to fix any audio issues that you may have identified when you played through your tracks. And you do this by applying EQ or applying effects. For example, with the bass, I had to turn up the gain 
so that when my fader was at zero, the track was bouncing at around minus 12 dB. That's a good level to start uh, your mix. In Adobe Audition, this is the section where you apply all your effects like EQ and compression and reverb. When you click on this section, you'll see this fly out menu. And in that menu, you'll see all the effects that you can use on that track. Once you've fixed any issues that you might have found on any of the tracks, it's time to really get down to the mixing. At the beginning of the tutorial, I mentioned four things that you're basically doing in mixing. And the next two things are your EQ and your compression. The order in which you do this depends on what you're looking for in your mix. As a general rule, you want to EQ first if you have any problems with the tracks that you're dealing with and you need to get rid of uh, some frequencies that might not be good in the mix. So for example, if you're doing vocals, you want to get rid of all the low end stuff in the vocals to make the vocals clearer. If you have a clean recording that has minimum issues, then maybe you can start with the compression and then you go on to your EQ to get all those frequencies shining out. After you've fixed any problems that you might have with the tracks, you can go ahead and start playing with the faders and do a rough mix even before you start applying any effects. As you apply EQ, compression and reverb and other effects to your tracks, the volume of those tracks will be changing and so you want to make sure that one there's nothing that is clipping that is going over and two you want to constantly monitor your main mix bus so that it's not clipping a good level at the monitor mix bus is around minus 12 db and maybe not exceed minus 5 or minus 3 db that leaves you some headroom when it comes to mastering your track. I won't go into detail about all the effects that you can apply as you mix, but the most common effects that are applied in mixing music is a reverb, for example, on vocals. And reverb on vocals helps the vocals sound like they are recorded in a certain environment. That could be a cathedral or maybe a stadium or even a small church and so it gives life to the vocals and make it sound like they're actually recorded in a certain space. And there are a number of other effects that you can apply to your tracks depending on what you are looking for. Things like delays and echo and uh, things like that that uh, go along with the music that you are recording. As you are mixing, at some points you might need to solo your tracks. Soloing your track means muting everything else and just listening to that one track so that you can hear clearly what that track is doing and how the effects that you're applying are affecting that track. But at the end of the day, you also want to hear how that track or that instrument or that vocal sounds when everything else is playing. Another common thing that you will do when you're recording a stereo track or music is to pan your tracks. You can pan your tracks left or right. And uh, if you're familiar with any music, when you listen to music on headphones, or in your living room, you'll, you'll hear some instruments seem to be coming more from one side of the speakers than from the other. Generally, your kick drum and your main vocalist are always centered. Once you have a mix that you're happy with, 
you can apply final compression and EQ on the mix bus to get your final final sound. Some people do what is called top-down mixing and that means instead of applying your EQ and compression to the mix bus after you finish mixing, they apply that before they start mixing. So at the beginning of the session, they apply compression and EQ right at the end. There are pros and cons to both, but the biggest advantage of doing the top-down mixing is as you mix, you're already hearing how it's going to be sounding with EQ and compression applied and it also shows you the levels coming out of the main bus as you apply, as you mix and apply effects on the tracks. Some final advice. When you're mixing, make sure you use good headphones to mix. Don't use earbuds to mix your music, get good headphones. If you're going to be using monitors, don't use the computer monitors. Get some good studio monitors with what is called a flat response. And studio monitors with a flat response just means speakers that you can listen to that don't enhance any frequencies. The second thing is uh, try and mix in a room that is sound treated so that there's no sound that is bouncing off the walls and you can hear the sound clearly without any interference from reflection of sound back to you. And then finally once you have mixed your track try and play it on different devices like uh, play it on your phone with earbuds on, play it through your computer and listen through the computer speakers, get a car radio and play it in the car radio and see how it sounds in those different environments. A really good mix will sound good in all those spaces. And that's it. That's your basic tutorial to start you on your journey to mixing. Whether you're using Adobe Audition CS6 or the newer version of Adobe Audition or you're using Pro Tools, whatever you're using, the principles that I've just talked about uh, are the same. And these are just very, very basic principles that can get you started on your journey to uh, mixing.